In the first two videos, we have seen how to declare manifolds in Sage, how to work with charts, scalar fields, and vector fields. And now we want to take a look at differential forms and tensor fields. Let's start with one forms. One way to get a one form is to take the differential of a scalar field. Not all one forms are differential of scalar fields, but that's one way to get some. Remember that in the last videos we have declared a three-dimensional manifold M and a scalar field F on M. So let's recall this scalar field. So that was this uh, function on the manifold, which in standard coordinates is given by the expression X plus Y squared plus Z cubed. And uh, in order to get its differential, which will then be a one form, we apply the differential method. So let's see what we get. So the differential of F is then given by dx plus 2y dy plus 3z squared dz. So that's exactly the right result. And uh, since we have not uh, specified any chart in the display method here, we, it's being expressed in terms of the standard chart and the standard coordinates x, y, and z. We can also express it in other charts like the polar chart. So if we do that, then we get the corresponding expression for the differential in the coordinates r, phi, and t. All right. Now, um, as for vector fields and scalar fields, we can evaluate at points. And if we evaluate uh, this differential that we've just defined, df, at the point P of our manifold, which we have defined last time, uh, or the time before, then uh, we can display it and it, we get a particular co-vector, which is given by this expression, which comes from evaluating the general df at the point P. All right. Now we can. Uh, what is a covector? A covector at a point P will be is a uh, linear form on the tangent space. So that means covectors can be applied to vectors, tangent vectors, and then one gets a number. Uh, one tangent vector that we have defined last time was uh, the vector field V evaluated at P. So that is this tangent vector. And now if we apply df to V, then we should get a number and let's see what we get. Well, we get the number four. So maybe we check quickly if this is right. I mean, this dx, dy, dz is the dual basis of the tangent basis dx, dy, dz. So if we apply dx, then we get the coefficient of ddx, so which is two. If we apply dy, then we get minus one times four, which is minus four. Two minus four is minus two. And if we apply dz to ddz, then uh, we get, because of this factor, three times two is six. So minus two plus six is four. So it seems to be right. All right. And um, we have looked at another scalar field, little h, which was given by an unspecified function. And if we take its differential, then we get as our coefficients uh, of the differential, the derivatives of this unspecified function. So it's no problem to work with unspecified functions in Sage. Okay, but not every uh, one form is a differential of a, of a scalar field. We can also define one forms directly from scratch by first declaring a one form. So let's declare a one form on this subset U. The mathematical name uh, given to it is omega. And I just, just like for vector fields, I explicitly set the coordinate functions in the default chart in this case um, uh, as certain expressions and see what I get. So indeed, my one form omega is now get, gets x squared plus y squared as the coefficient function of dx and similarly for the other two components. Now here you see uh, displaying omega as the word omega is not very nice. Uh, as I told you last time, there's a way to fix this. We can give the one form a um, LaTeX name, and then as long as LaTeX rendering is applied, this will give you the LaTeX output. So we could add a LaTeX name with a straight raw string backslash omega here to uh, get the symbol omega. But actually, there's also another way, namely, if you work with strings, then you are not uh, restricted to Latin. Uh, to Latin characters, so uh, any Unicode character works. So for example, we could directly use a string with the Greek letter omega. So let me, let's do that. And um, let me put in the Unicode encoding of omega. So we have now a string with the letter little omega. And then indeed, uh, uh, this uh, Greek character omega is used. Actually, you could use any 
any Unicode symbol here. So for example, we could use something like this one. And then uh, we could use this symbol for our form omega. But maybe uh, omega is more uh, suitable here. So let's return to omega. OK. Now, point-wise, a covector acts on tangent vectors. And so one forms act on vector fields. And the result will then be a scalar field. So if we let om this omega act on our vector field v, and then we, the result will be a scalar field, uh, which is computed by Sage here in both charts. We can do the same thing with our one form df, apply that to our vector field uh, v, and then we get this result. But now df applying to vector field is the same. That means differentiating the function or the scalar field f in the direction v. But applying a vector field to a scalar field, something we saw last time, also means differentiating the scalar field f in the direction v. So both things should be actually the same thing. So let's see if they coincide. Yes, indeed, they coincide as they should. All right, so much about one forms. Now they are also higher degree forms. And uh, one way to get a two form, for example, is to wedge to one form. So let's do that. Let's take our one form omega and wedge it with the differential of f. Then we get a two form, which we give the Python name a, and let's display it. And then we see that omega wedge df is then a certain two form. Uh, so it's a linear combination of these uh, wedge products of the coefficient differentials with certain uh, coefficient functions in front of it. And if we want to know uh, this, uh, or want to see this two form in another chart rather than this uh, default chart, then we just insert the chart here and we get uh, the expression in polar coordinates in this case. So now it's expressed in dr, d phi with certain coefficient functions depending on r, phi and t. Good. Now that in the ne next uh, box, we uh, give this two form, which already has a Python name, also a mathematical name capital A. And then we can insert a, a two form, we can insert two vector fields uh, to get a, a scalar field as a result. And if we do this in this case, then this is the scalar field that results from it. Complicated expression. Uh, in general, two forms are anti-symmetric in their arguments. So that means if I interchange u and v, I should get the negative of uh, a of v and u. So let's see if that's correct. So Sage checks this in this particular case and indeed it is true as it should. Good. So uh, to get a higher form degree, we can also take a one form and take its different exterior derivative. Then this will lead into another two form. So if I take the one form omega, apply the exterior derivative to it, then I get a two form and the de exterior derivative of omega is now this two form. Now we have, uh, if we apply d again, then we get a three form and that three form is zero because ap applying the exterior derivative twice results in zero as we know. All right, so these are uh, forms. Uh, you can also wedge more one forms or two forms to get higher degree differential forms and apply the exterior derivative, etc., etc. Uh, express everything in any chart you like. Uh, Sage does all that for you. So much about uh, differential forms. Now we have seen all the fields we have seen so far are special types of tensor fields, actually. So a tensor field of type 0, 0 is just a scalar field. That's something we started with. Then a, t a, field, a tensor field of type 1, 0 is a vector field. That's what we did in the last video. And a tensor field of type 0, 1 is a one form. That's what we just saw. And similarly, a tensor field of type 2, 0, 2, which is in addition anti-symmetric in its arguments, is a two form. Similarly, if you have a, a type 0, comma k field, which is totally anti-symmetric in its arguments, that would be a k form in general. So those are the forms we, the tensor fields we have already seen. But you can work with any tensor field of any type in Sage. So for instance, let's declare a tensor field of type 1, 2 uh, and give it the name t. And we set only two of its components. Now all these indices run 
So we have now three slots because one for the one here and two for the two, so three entries. And uh, we set two of the components to these coefficient functions. All It's understood again that all the other coefficients are then zero. And so if we display this, we get this tensor field. So it's of type one and two. And we have only set two components. This is why we have only these two sums here. All right, so let's see one. This one here means that we have the first coordinate function here. The two means here we have the second one here. And the one here means we have the first one here, an X here, a Y here, and an X here again. So that's a, a general tensor field that we have defined this way. We can take a look at the you know, individual non-zero components of this tensor field, if you like. So here they are. And um, now a tensor field in general also acts or can be applied to uh, forms and vector fields. So if the tensor field is of type 1, 2, then the first slot should be a one form and the other two slots should be vector fields. So we could take this tensor field of type 1, 2 and insert a one form. Let's take the one form omega that we have defined and that in, then we need to insert two vector fields and we have some vector fields already defined. So let's insert the vector fields u and v and see what we get. It should be the result has to be a scalar field. And here is the scalar field. So that's this function of the manifold on, on, the, on the subset u, because this is where we have defined our tensor field. All right. Now, working with tensor fields, we can do all kinds of arithmetics. In particular, we can form the tensor product of two tensor fields. And this is uh, uh, in, in, in the programming, this is, uh, uh, this is symbolized by the asterisk. So if I take, uh, define V times OM times OM, this means I take two times the tensor. So that is just the usual two times. And then I take the tensor product of the vector field V and the one form omega and then again the one form omega. So this gives me a one comma two type tensor field. And the tensor field we have already defined is also a one comma two type tensor field. So we can subtract it to get another one comma two type tensor field. So let's see what we get. Indeed, it's a complicated expression with lots of non-zero components. And it's one type one comma two, one, uh, one vector component and two core vector components. Now, if you have these higher type tensor fields, uh, vector components and core vector components can be contracted. So for example, for our one comma two type tensor, we could contract the first component with the second or the first component with the third. These are the two options to contract. And uh, let's take the first and the third, which by Python numbering refers to number zero and two. And then the result will be a one form. So our type one comma two is, is uh, reduced to type zero comma one, which is uh, a one form. So and that's the one form that we get, the type zero comma one tensor field. Another way to specify this operation, just another way, notation is closer to mathematical notation. Namely, if you write down what this tracing means is that you take the components of the type one comma two tensor field T and then you equate. So you do take the same index for the zero comma for the first and the third component and then you sum and then only the index I is left. And that's why this is a one form. So this is the expression that, that you use in the definition of this trace. And you can also tell Sage uh, basically this index notation. So use square brackets and insert a string and the string takes an upper index K. So that's this covariant part, uh, this contravariant part. And then the, we write down the lower indices and you indicate the summation by the same symbol for the for the upper index and the second lower index. Uh, so that's just another way to write down this trace for where you trace the first and the last index. And so the result should be give us the same thing. And uh, Sage confirms that. It's just a, I like that notation because it's closer to mathematical notation. 
You can also contract tensor fields with vector fields. For example, uh, then the notation would be you take your tensor field, you want to contract the second index with a vector field V. And uh, so that means you take the second, the last index is here, is K. You, it's contracted with the only index of V. And then the result will be a, a 1 comma 1 tensor field. And this is what you get here. So V of course has only one component. Uh, so there's the only thing that you can insert here is a zero. So the two refers to the zero one second. So actually the third component of T and the zero here uh, refers to the zero. So actually the first component of V. These are contracted and uh, then you get this result. Similarly, you can do the same, achieve the same result uh, using index notation. Then perhaps it's clear what happens. So you write T, uh, use the bracket operator and the corresponding string, tensor, multiply with V, another string there is, there's only one possibility. And the fact that the K symbol here is the same as the K symbol here tells Sage that the contraction is to be done over this index with that index. And then the result will be something that only has indices I and J. So it's a one comma one tensor field. And uh, namely it's this one. Let's see that we get the same result. Yes, that is true. Now we can do already a lot of useful things with Sage. We can declare manifolds, work with charts, look at scalar fields, vector fields, general uh, tensor fields like differential forms. We can form the differential or exterior differential of a differential form, etc. And uh, one important thing is still missing though, namely metrics. And we'll see how this is being done in Sage in the next video.